Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about a very simple and a common problem, but a disturbing problem, and that is snoring. So what is snoring? When should one get worried about snoring? Is snoring really dangerous? Some kind of self-help tips for snoring. In the sequence and series of videos, we will discuss all these, but those who have snoring, persistent snoring, or snoring is disturbing, do keep following us and we'll give you more information. So to continue the story about snoring, the first thing that we would like to tell you is what is snoring? So I think uh, we do know, but let's go over it a little bit more in detail. Snoring is a sound which is produced when we breathe and the muscles at the back of the palate, tongue, throat, etc., they vibrate. And that's a sound. And that sound is called snoring. Then comes this question. So what causes this snoring? It is a sound, but why is this sound produced? So when we are breathing normally, like all of you and me are breathing, we don't normally have a sound. So the sound is produced when the breathing passage is narrow. So to, to go over this, I'll show you this briefly. So this is the nasal passage. This is the mouth. This is the tongue. And this is the windpipe. So normally the air goes in and then comes out with no sound. However, if there is any narrowing in this passage, that's when the sound is produced. And that is called snoring. So it may be because of some issue in the nose, could be a swelling of the internal filters, which are turbinates, could be a blockage, could be the septum, there's a midline, septum divides the nose into two parts or two nostrils, those passages, it probably more towards one side, could be a narrowing at the base of the tongue or any of this, or could be combined in multiple places. So any of these conditions together can cause snoring. So now let's talk a little bit about if you have snoring or somebody you know close to you has snoring. First thing you do is try and identify, is this intermittent? That means it's occasional, once in a while, once in a blue moon. Or is it continuous? Continuous means every night or almost three to four nights in a week. Is it mild? Is it loud? It does it disturb the bed partner? Can it be heard outside the room? So those kind of snoring, which is loud, persistent, continuous and disturbing should definitely be addressed and seek help. Is it seasonal that it comes only in certain times of the year? Maybe there is some allergy is it associated with the runny nose, blocked nose. Anything else that you know definitely worsens it, like consumption of alcohol. Have you noticed or your bed partner, friend has noticed that when you take a drink or maybe excessive alcohol, the snoring is really much louder. Does it change in sound throughout the night? Does it like is continuous or does it go up and then stop and there's a pause and then it restarts? So these are some of the other aspects or deeper things that one needs to know about snoring before we go further and discuss that is snoring dangerous? Should you meet a doctor? Commonly, I see people and say that, you know, why are you saying snoring is a problem? So many people snore. Everybody that I know snores. And we'll discuss in the next uh, videos that when does snoring become a problem and why to seek help? Now coming to this next important question, which is often asked, that is snoring dangerous? And very often the person who is snoring is sometimes not disturbed by it at all and is brought for consultation or comes for consultation as a request by other people. So coming to this point that is snoring dangerous? So there has been a lot of research on this and pure isolated, loud, persistent snoring has been seen to be associated with an increased risk of having high blood pressure, 
in a subsequent years. That's one part of it. Second part is that along with the snoring, if there are pauses in breathing, which are called as apneas, apnea means a pause at least of a duration of 10 seconds or more. Then definitely this becomes abnormal and should and is known to be associated with the risk of developing high blood pressure, raised blood sugar, decreased blood supply to the heart, so it can cause heart problems, changes in the brain, memory problems, mood, irritability, anger, weight changes, appetite increase. And we do measure this by like we have numbers for blood sugar, blood pressure, we have a number for this. That means how many times does the breathing stop in one hour of sleep? Less than five is considered normal. Five to 15 is mild. 15 to 30 times per hour of sleep is moderate and more than 30 is considered severe. So those with moderate and severe are definitely at a higher risk of developing the complications. So I hope the answer to this question that is snoring dangerous is clear. In short, snoring by itself, if loud, persistent, is known to be associated with complications and snoring with the pauses, which is called as apneas, and that condition is called as obstructive sleep apnea is definitely harmful for the overall health. This happens because this is the breathing pipe and then you can have a blockage and no air may go through. Then it will open up, then it will close again and this can carry on multiple times at night. In the next video, we can discuss this a little more for those who are interested that why does this cause so many problems? And how does one really measure it? The next question is that how does an individual know that they have obstructive sleep apnea? So for this, there are two ways to detect it. One is what do you feel or what does the person feel who's having the problem of snoring? And then we have a formal testing for really deciphering that is it pure snoring or is it snoring with sleep apnea coming to the symptoms first so there are a few very typical symptoms which occur during the night and the individual sometimes is not even aware that these could be signs or symptoms of sleep apnea so first is a very disturbed restless sleep frequent awakenings waking up either to just have water, throat gets very dry, increased thirst, increased trips to the washroom. Often people think that these increased trips to the washroom are in men, they think it's a prostrate. Some people think it is diabetes, keep checking their sugars. But this could be because of the loud snoring and presence of sleep apnea. Sometimes there is sleep talking, muttering, uh, flinging of the arms, legs, on the whole, a very restless sleep. What about the day? So in spite of having adequate number of hours of sleep, if you wake up tired, unrefreshed, want to just get back into bed, take another snooze, nap, that's a sign that the night didn't go well. So the night may not have gone well for many reasons, but if there is loud snoring and waking up tired, these are highly suggestive of this condition called as sleep apnea. What about as the day goes on? You need definitely a lot of caffeine to keep you awake. And post lunch, there is almost this irresistible desire to just put your head down. But before that, if you sit in the car and you just take a nap, you feel okay, the driver is driving, you can take a nap. Or if you're driving yourself and you need to either pull over or you feel that you know, you're just tending to doze off at the red lights. So these are all signs and symptoms that something happened at night and didn't allow you to get a good quality sleep, though you had a good quantity. 
as during the day presence of irritability mood changes forgetfulness difficulty concentration are all subtle signs of a bad night so i do hope that if in the presence of loud snoring there are either these night symptoms day symptoms or together these are highly suggestive of this condition called as sleep apnea in the next video i will talk a little briefly about how does one test this and what is a sleep study coming to the next question that how does one measure sleep apnea objectively as the problem is occurring at night so the test is also conducted at night and that's called as a sleep study or a sleep test what do we really measure so we measure activity from the brain the snoring breathing oxygen all through the night to decide what is the sleep quality like what is the snoring like how many times are the pauses and the oxygen through the night so thus there are numerous ways of recording this one is the ideal or the gold standard in which all these electrodes are placed the trained technician is available through the night monitoring the patient to get information about all the sensors we do have some shorter simpler ways as well and those are things like this that we give this machine which the patient can wear themselves with a sensor at the tip of the nose one on the finger and the machine is fixed with the belt this records the data overnight the machine is obtained or got back the next morning the data is downloaded and we get information about the breathing pauses oxygen and in some cases the heart rate through the night we also have some other simpler tests now this is a device which is worn on the finger through the night and can be worn for multiple nights with the help of these strips at the back this records the oxygen and there is a algorithm or a sensor which can tell you the breathing pauses so thus in these ways we can evaluate the breathing and oxygen and in some cases the activity from the brain at night to decide is the sleep apnea mild moderate or severe or is there no sleep apnea and what is the percentage or chances of snoring so this is what we call uh, the objective measurement or evaluation for sleep apnea by a sleep test in this video i am going to talk about a few self help techniques or tips that you can do to maybe decrease uh, the snoring will it totally go away really not sure but what can be done so if you remember or recall we had talked about the causes of snoring so very often they are related to the nose and that could be something here or it could be in the oral cavity behind the tongue or in the windpipe easier way of course or the easiest to tackle is if it's just in the nose so if there is an obstruction meaning that the filters are enlarged or there is a lot of allergy some amount of anti allergics meeting a good ent will help second common cause is the snoring is the weight gain or obesity so if there has been a recent change in weight or one is obese it's been seen that that the weight creates a further narrowing of this airway and thus causes increase in the snoring and makes it more louder so definitely work on the weight and bring the weight down third is aggravating factors such as consumption of alcohol smoking etc avoid those and snoring should get better then is the body the position that you sleep in so if you sleep in a supine position the tongue tends to fall back and the obstruction is much more whereas sleeping on a side with a slight elevation of the head end will decrease the intensity of snoring 
Um, an earlier dinner, a light dinner will also help. And then lastly, some exercises for the tongue and the palate, which if done regularly over a period of time for a few months will decrease the intensity and some breathing techniques will also help. So these will all help if there is just isolated snoring. However, if the snoring is accompanied by a moderate to severe sleep apnea, these measures should be continued and you will need some specific measure such as a treatment with a device which is called as a PAP, which is with a mask, it gives air under pressure and keeps the airway open. Or now we also have something called as dental devices worn over the teeth. So finally, the treatment is all individualized, meaning or personalized that does the patient need a nasal treatment only or nasal treatment plus PAP or nasal treatment exercises PAP or PAP alone and may not need any nasal specific measures. So these are uh, a few things which you can do, but do remember that they alone may not be helpful and then you will need to see a physician. What about the role of uh, nasal strips, uh, oral sprays, etc.? So strips, yes, if they are placed usually on the bridge of the nose, they tend to open up the nostril, help a little bit in the airflow, may decrease the loudness of the snoring, but don't really help much in the apnea. And very often the snoring just gets back. And thus, uh, I do hope this has been helpful and the measures that you can take to improve the snoring. So the last and uh, final question is that, when should one meet a specialist, a doctor for a complaint, which is a common and simple complaint according to the patient for just snoring? So as we have discussed in the previous videos, snoring, if accompanied by nighttime symptoms or daytime symptoms, should definitely be a condition or a situation to meet a specialist. Snoring, if it's to the tune that it's disturbing your personal life. We have an entity called as a social divorce when patients, the bed partners will shift out of the bedrooms. Snoring, which leaves you feeling tired and exhausted, should definitely be addressed. And all the snoring, which is persistent, loud, and on every night basis needs to be addressed. But yes, if it's just an occasional snoring, and uh, with a common cold, just once in a year, we do know that it will settle by itself. So I do hope this is clear. Snoring also in the presence of other diseases, such as uncontrolled diabetes, blood pressure not getting controlled, weight gain is a problem, memory problems. So with other coexisting conditions, it can make that condition worse and not be very good um, or responsive to treatment. So I do hope that these few videos about snoring have been helpful and people can decide that do I, can I just help myself or do I need to see a specialist to sort this out before it becomes a, bug, a much bigger problem and causes significant health impacts. Thank you for your attention.